Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Um, I hope you're having a great day. I'm having a great day. Uh, I've been a starving artist. Uh, I collect picture frames. I think, you know, if I see something that's cheap, I'll pick it up. Or if um, I've got an old painting or something, or I've, I've got an old print in a, a frame, I'll take it out and use the frame. And I've got a couple of frames that I'd like to put some pastels in. But I didn't have any pastel paper um, big enough to fit some of these frames. But what I do have is lots of watercolour paper. So I thought I'd have a go at making my own pastel paper. And this is the result. Um, I've tried it out. I did a little sketch here showing you that um, it did actually work. So it's a bit of a spoiler this is because it kind of spoils what the video is all about. But it did, it did work and um, I want to show you how I went about that and how well the pastels went on the paper. I'm really looking forward to just making loads and loads of pastel paper. So let's just get straight into the video. I've got a bit of an experiment going. I've got this clear gesso and I'm gonna coat some uh, watercolor paper with this because I wanna make some paper that I can use uh, with pastels. Um, I've tried just using a pastel pad and it's not it's not cutting it for me. I'm not being able to get enough layers of pastels on. So this is my watercolor palette and I've used some um, alizarin crimson. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, artist quality alizarin crimson watercolor and I'm going to put a wash on this Langton extra smooth hot pressed pad and hopefully um, I will be able to use it uh, for the pastels. Well I'm going to put the watercolor on first and then when that's dry I'm going to put the clear gesso on. I've got some water here. Got a nice big brush. Get some water on my palette. And I'm just tinting the paper with this alizarin. I don't want it to be pink. Now I could wet the paper first, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go straight over it. And if we get the odd streaky bit, I'm not bothered. I'm not fussed at all. Oh, we've got some, um, looks like a bit of ultramarine blue. That's from my dirty palette. Not cool. Well, actually it is. I'm going to, oh, I shall quite like that, I think. There's a, you can see, I can see the piece of pigment. There it is. Uh, it's got a bit more going off. I've squirted some of this alizarin out of the tube, so it, it's going to get nice and, and lots of uh, colour on there. Get that hair, hair off. So this is going to be interesting. So. The, the gesso I've got is clear and it's got grit in it. So the idea is I can tint any watercolor paper I like uh, to any color. Uh, when I've done that, I can let that dry, put the, the gesso on. And um, let that dry. And then I should be able to use it as pastel paper. This probably will cockle a bit. There we are. That's interesting that it's gone deep into the grain around the edges. I don't know what's going off there. That It's a really old pad. I've had it a long while. So it's probably got polluted or something. So there we are. That's the watercolour bit done. I'll come back and put the uh, gesso on shortly. Right, I'm back. My piece of paper is dry. I am going to put the clear gesso on. And hopefully this will become a piece of pastel paper. So brand new tub, lift off the uh, film. 
This is water based, I'm guessing. I don't know if I should stir this actually, uh, or give it a shake. I'm gonna give it a shake. Mind you, that might put bubbles in it. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna go for it. So I'm using an inch and a half decorator's brush. I don't know how many coats I should give it. I'm just gonna give it one, I think. doesn't matter if it lifts up the um, watercolour because the watercolour paint is a trans... Uh, hang on, it's a reversible coating, it's non-convertible. What that means is uh, water will soften the pigment again and lift it up, lift it up, but alizarin crimson, which is the watercolour that I used for this, the paint I used, is a staining pigment. So even if it lifts it up, it's not gonna um, take the color off the paper because it's stained. So if you're ever doing any watercolors with a laser in crimson, you will find out that you cannot get it off once you put it on, that's it. So that's what, one of the reasons why I, I chose a laser in crimson for this. Just lay it off a little bit the old decorating techniques coming into play here when I used to be a house painter. There we are. So it doesn't feel very gritty at the minute, I have to say. I'm just wondering if I should have stirred it, but I'll see when it's dry. If it's not gritty, I will stir the tub and give it another coat. So that's it, that's the clear gesso on. All I've got to do now is wait for this to dry and then I can start drawing a pastel or I should say painting a pastel. So I'll see you in a bit and we'll try it out. The paper has now dried. I only give it one coat. I thought I can always give, I cut the, the sheeting off. I thought, I thought I could always give the other half another coat if this doesn't work. I was so excited to try it out and I've got this hard pastel um, just sketching in the scene and the first stroke on I could not believe how um, responsive it was to taking the pastel it just worked I was really really happy with that so I'm going to draw or paint this um, scene that I'd done uh, in uh, an application called Teosui Sketches. If you want to see uh, that sketch, which is now on the screen, um, if you want to see me draw that, that's on my other channel, Steve Elliott Art, the digital channel. I'll put a link in the description below and possibly uh, above on the screen somewhere where you can go and see that. But I'm just sort of just sketching in lightly the um, composition it's all there for me. I did this in Teosui because I um, I wanted to try these really uh, wacky colours with this sort of pink in the background. This was, uh, the photo I took for this sketch was on a really hot day about two years ago. And I was on a, a mate's narrowboat. Um, the guy that I'm in uh, the blues band with, you can check out that channel as well if you want. K9 Go Naz UK. Got a lot of blues tracks on there. Well, I was on his narrow boat with uh, the lovely Special K. Uh, that, that's my uh, partner. If uh, you don't know that, you might not. I've mentioned her all the time on the other channel, but this channel being fairly new, I probably haven't mentioned her much. But I was on the narrow boat with the lovely Special K and uh, Kevin and Angie. And it was so hot. Kev got burnt and it was blistering. I'd stayed pretty much inside the narrow boat looking out of the windows most of the time. But I did take a few photographs. So two years later, in the depths of winter, when I'm cold and miserable, I decide to uh, revisit those photos and have a go on this um, piece of watercolour paper. Uh, so it was no accident that I coated this with alizarin crimson. Apart from it being a staining pigment and I knew it would work fairly well, I wanted to be working on this pink ground uh, for this drawing. 
So as you can see, it, I mean, it's worked really well. I haven't costed it out. Um, it was something like £20 for the tub of gesso. gesso. The art pad, wasn't. it wasn't an expensive watercolour paper. It was a fairly cheap pad, so that was probably about 5 or £6, maybe a bit more. Uh, so we we're sort of up to £30. Uh, I don't know how many um, sheets I'm going to be able to do with this gesso. I'm going to imagine a lot, really, uh, a lot. So I think it will be uh, cost effective, but more importantly, you know, I can create any color background I want and it is, it has got a grit on it. It's not like sort of the paper and it really does hold it really well. As you can see there, I'm putting the, um, the uh, pastel on and it's taking it really, really well. I'm just speeding it up now because it's sort of, um, just repeating the same action as, as applying those um, pastels. And you'll also, also notice that uh, a, a lot of my, I've just bought some new pastels and when I first get them, sometimes they don't want to um, seem to release the chalk straight away or the pastel. So I just make a little mark on the side of the uh, paper masking tape there. Sometimes just to see if it's the right color I'm looking for. And sometimes just to um, sort of break the surface of it so that it will take the pastel better. So I guess the test will come as I start building up these colours and adding more colours over it. So I'm wanting really vibrant, bright colours. You know, these aren't real uh, true to life photographic colors these are colors that i want to use um that particular pastel really didn't want to uh, go on very well it wasn't uh, uh, that was a winsor and newton pastel and it wasn't playing for me so as i say i want these really vi vibrant pinks oranges and i want that pink sort of showing through the the uh, background to get this sort of hot uh, day as it was. So I'm using purples in the shadows there and some browns and oranges on the uh, river bank. We started off on the canal and then we, we um, moved on to the river. Some hot pink in there. So you can see I'm really um, going for it with the colors but i was i was confident because i'd done this thumbnail uh in teosui sketches on my ipad i'd really recommend anybody uh doing sort of um thumbnails and um practice drawings on an ipad before you get into the actual uh real painting saves a lot of materials and you know an idea is going to work What I'm doing there, I'm just using that brush just to sort of soften off some of the pastels. Then I'm going to go back into painting them again. And it also means if it's starting to clog, the surface of the paper starting to clog, it releases some of that pastel so I can get some more pastel on there. As you can see now, it's taking that really, really well. So that's just an old decorator's brush I've got. Well, when I say old, I've I'm, I'm never used it as a decorator's brush. I buy uh, packs of brushes from Costco and some of them I'll use for decorating brushes and then I'll uh, sort of I've the other half off to use uh, with artistic painting as it were to use to apply you know thick oil paint or um, you know for doing skies and things like that. So as you can see look I'm overlaying lots of pastels now and it's taking it really really well. I'm really, really pleased with it. Uh, what I love about pastels, you can just get this such vibrant colours. I, I don't think there's any other medium that I've used. I do a lot of watercolour paint, 
watercolour was my um, main medium for many years and I only painted in watercolours and uh, didn't really touch much else. I've done some oil painting, but pastels really do, for me, allow you to just go crazy with colour that um, is not so easy to do in other mediums. I, I just love it. I love working in pastels. I think at the moment it probably is my favourite favorite medium get some nice bright yellows in there so i'm using a convict combination of the tip of the pastel or the side of the pastel if i want to get a nice big stroke in and it all looks a bit messy around the edge but when i take that tape off it re really does look nice it's um it works out really well Just building up those layers of pastels there. There's not much of the original pink background left actually. Putting some russets in. Again, warm shadows going in there. Some highlights. It's all a bit abstract, but you know, that's I'm very happy with that. I wasn't going for um a realistic looking painting as you can see from the thumbnail and certainly with the colors i think being uh, really abstracts fine i think that works well just um echoing that um pink in the water a little bit there popping a few more highlights in a few vertical strokes going in um, just to give the impression of water. So as you can see, compared to the digital sketch, there's a lot more strokes going in there and a lot more happening, a lot more colour. It's much more vibrant. Really pleased with the uh, effect as it's going so far. Few more highlights and then i uh, go back in with the purple again you notice there's a cow standing on the bank looking sort of straight out at the river it could be a person i suppose there i just dust off a little bit of the um pastel so i could add a bit more color onto it i think i've used every color uh, imaginable on this i'm really not sort of working with a, a limited palette some horizontal strokes for the water as well. So it's coming to the end. Just going to slow it back down to real time now for you, just so I uh, finish off. So the main thing is, uh, I can say at this point that that um, paper, the pastel paper that I made using the clear gesso and a watercolour wash has worked really really well and i am very happy with the results so i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please give me a thumbs up it, it helps me out a lot if you've enjoyed it that is and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing because i'm uh, producing at the minute a video every week so if you want to see what i'm doing and uh, keep up to date don't forget to tick the bell as well and share with all your friends and and do all that stuff and write a comment uh tell me what you think all of that is uh i'm really interested in seeing so hopefully i'll see you all in the next one bye